Hi, I'm Barbara Fox, and today I thought I'd talk about multicast and PIM sparse mode. So I guess the first thing to talk about is what is multicast. So we've got UDCast traffic, and that goes from a particular source to a particular destination. We have broadcast traffic, which goes from a particular source to every destination on the network. And then we have multicast traffic, which goes from a particular source to a set of destinations on the network. So the way routing works is the destination advertises itself into the network, right? And says, I'm here if you wanna to talk to me. The routing protocols create a loop free tree to that particular destination. So the root of the tree is the destination and anyone who wants to talk to that destination goes through the tree to get to the destination for their conversation. Routing's unidirectional. So you're always sending your traffic towards the root of the tree to the destination that you want to talk to. Multicast is sort of backwards from that. The root of the tree is the source of the traffic. And so it's sending traffic out to whatever destinations want the traffic. It still needs to send it out loop free, obviously, but the root is the source and the leaves are the destinations. So it's sort of backwards from normal, normal routing. So if we're sitting at home and we wanna watch a particular TV channel, I'm sitting at my house and I wanna watch Top Chef on Bravo. What I could do is go all the way to the source and ask for that stream of traffic and it could be unicast to me. My next door neighbor wants to watch ESPN. So they ask for ESPN and that traffic is unicast to them. And then my neighbor on the other side also wants to watch ESPN and makes a request to watch ESPN and the traffic is unicast to them as well. Well, that doesn't really make sense, right? Because now the trunk, the trunks are carrying duplicate traffic for all of the endpoints that want to watch a particular cha TV channel. And that doesn't make any sense. What we want to do is we want to replicate the traffic as close to the destination as possible. Right? We don't want to have the same duplicate traffic clogging up, up our trunks. In order to service this multicast traffic that the root of the tree is the source, we have multicast routers. And these are PIM routers. Now PIM is protocol independent multicast. It means that it's riding over the IGPs and it doesn't care what IGP it run, rides over. So PIM routers are normally advertised using their loopback addresses. They're not using their interface addresses and they're using the IGP to reach each other. Same way BGP does. So it doesn't matter what the underlying IGP is. Okay, so we've got all these PIM routers and they understand that the traffic is flowing you know, from the source to the destinations. It doesn't really know what the destinations are, but it wants to make sure that it's only replicating, it's replicating the traffic as close to the destination as possible. And so they're running PIM sparse mode in order to make this happen. Now for PIM, PIM dense mode, basically everything is broadcast everywhere. And if a router doesn't want the traffic, it says, hey, quit sending me that. I don't need that traffic. In PIM sparse mode, what we want to do is we want to only send the traffic to the routers that are asking for it, to the devices that ask for the traffic. And to that end, what we have are two concepts, a BSR, a bootstrap router, and a rendezvous point. Now the bootstrap router is the router that's directing the traffic. It's saying that which rendezvous points service which multicast streams, multicast groups. And the rendezvous points, they're almost like a video server for you know, a, a unicast thing. It's a place where the devices, the destination devices can go to ask for the traffic to be forwarded to them. Okay, so it's a place where the traffic is replicated. And it's really where you go to ask for, for that group's traffic for that. The first thing that, a uh, PIM area does is elect the bootstrap router. Now the bootstrap router and the rendezvous point, they can be the same device or they can be separate devices, but we're gonna just talk about them separately in this case to make it clear. So a bootstrap router is elected among the PIM routers the same way most elections go. 
everything has a priority. If the priority is the same, then the router with the highest IP address wins. So the first thing that the routers do is elect a bootstrap router. So in this case, let's pretend that uh, R2 is elected bootstrap router. So it says, oh, I'm bootstrap router, and it sends that information to all the other routers in the, in the PIM area. And then any router that wants to be a rendezvous point says, ooh, I want to be the rendezvous point for these for these multicast channels. And so whoever wants to be a rendezvous point tells the BSR and the BSR says, oh, okay. And sends out information to all the routers in the PIM area saying, okay, for this particular channel, these routers are the rendezvous points. So there can be one or more routers as rendezvous points. And so the BSR publishes which, what are the rendezvous points for particular channels. So in this case, let's just pretend that R4 is our rendezvous point. Okay, we only have one and it's R4. R2 told all the routers in the network that R4 is the rendezvous point for all five of these channels. Okay, so now we've got a rendezvous point, we've got the BSR, now we've got people at home watching television. And so they wanna watch a particular TV channel. So let's say that this house wants to watch ESPN. They send an IGMP message to their router and say they're going to fill in their SG information, right? The source and the group. So they say, I want to watch ESPN. That's the group. So they'll use this IP address as the group. And for the source, I don't care who the source is. I just want to watch ESPN. So they say star. And then R7 says, oh, I know that the rendezvous point for ESPN is R4. So I'm going to send my request towards R4 and say, I don't care what, what you use for a source, but I want to watch ESPN. I, I need the I need the spec for ESPN. And then this house also says, well, I want to watch ESPN too. And so it asks the same thing. But R7's already it's already asked for ESPN. So it, it just says, oh, okay, I need to forward the traffic to for that house as well. So R7 but it doesn't have to send another request to R4. So R4 says, oh, great. Okay, well, when I get ESPN traffic, I'm gonna forward it to you because you asked for it. So the way that this request is made is using IGMP, Internet Group Management Protocol. Now, V1 of this protocol just has a join message. So this device says, I wanna join this group and then it doesn't have a leave capability. So when it says it wants to join, then R7 says, are you still watching? Are you still watching? Are you still watching? They don't want to do that. So V2, we have a join and a leave. So that when you decide to change a channel, say, oh, I'm actually going to watch Top Chef. I'm going to change it to Bravo. You send a leave and then a new join for the new group. Now V3, instead of saying, I don't care who the source is, in V3, you can say, I want I want the traffic to come from a particular source. So that's IGMP v1, v2, v3. Okay, so now we have, we've made the request to watch ESPN. It's gone to R4. R4 needs to get the, needs, wants the traffic from ESPN. So what happens is R1 learned that R4 is the rendezvous viewpoint for all the groups, let's just say. And it starts receiving multicast traffic. And it can identify the multicast traffic because it's a class D address. It's, its first byte is between 224 and 239. So it says, oh, okay, well, I'm the source. This is coming from one of my uni ports. I'm the source for these channels. And R4 is the rendezvous point. So it sends a unicast message to R4 and says, I'm the source for these channels. And now R4 says, oh, okay. So if I want a particular channel, I will send a request to R1 for that channel. So it sends a request through R3 towards R1 for that channel. And now the traffic's gonna be multicast to R4. But R3 says, oh, wait a minute. This is a PIM request. You're asking for that group from R1 and you have to come through me. So really, I don't need to go to you to get the information for 
that for that channel. I'm also going to take it from R1 and I'm going to leave you. Don't send it to me anymore. I don't need you to send me it because otherwise I'd be receiving it on this way. It would go here and come back to me. We don't need that to happen. So don't send it to me. I'm going to take it from R1 and forward it out. So this is really what PIM's doing, what PIM sparse mode is doing. It's really just trying to minimize the amount of traffic on the trunk links so that it's not replicating traffic through the network. And what it wants to do, again, is replicate it as close to the destination as possible. Now we see in this picture that as close to the destination as possible is still going through a switch. But the switches are not, they're not IP, they're not running routing protocols, they're not participating in PIM sparse mode. So what's going to happen with them? They're going to get the channel and then they'd send it to every, it's, it's multicast, it's multicast traffic, they would just send it to every device. So every house would get every channel that anybody was watching. We don't really want to do that either. So what happens is when the end devices make their IGMP request, the switch does IGMP snooping. And so what it says is, oh, for the ESPN channel, I know that only these two links want it. And so they only forward the traffic out on these links because they're watching the IGMP traffic. So that's why you want to support IGMP snooping in your, in your switches. So I hope that was helpful. Thanks for your attention and I, I appreciate your time. All right, take care.